So here's one example of why project finance modeling is so complicated. So we've spoken about our DSRA or the debt service reserve account. Remember that the debt service reserve account needs to hold some interest and principal repayments for the debt, maybe for the next six months, maybe for the next year. Now it's financed at the end of construction. So what happens is we build this plant, we're drawing down on debt and equity, etc., etc. And the last day of construction, we say, hang on, our next six months now, now we're going to move into operations, we're going to start paying debt in the next six months worth of debt repayments is $100. So we need to finance that in a DSRA. So we draw down on our debt and equity. Let's assume we've got a 70% going ratio. So we draw down $70 worth of debt, $30 worth of equity, and we take that $100 and put it into a bank account called our debt service reserve account. So it's there. Right, and that now is to repay the next six months. But this ends up being a bit of a circular reference. Why? Well, let's have a look at the workings of a debt service reserve account. So the DSRA is funded out of both debt and equity. But as we've just seen up example, we draw down debt to fund the DSRA, which actually increases debt. So the DSRA now needs to fund increased repayments because if we increase our debt, our repayments will be higher because both our interest will be higher and our principal will be higher to repay the higher debt amount. That means the DSRA needs to be higher to fund these increased repayments. Now the next six months aren't $100, they're now $110. So now we need our DSA of $110 and we need to draw down a larger amount of debt, a large amount of equity. But now because our debt is larger, our repayments are larger as well. So now our DSRA is not $110, it's $120. And you can see that I've done this here in a bit of a diagram. The DSRA needs to cover these increased repayments. The DSRA needs to increase. This increases the debt, which partially funds the DSRA, so it funds in the gearing ratio. By increasing the DSRA, we increase the debt, but that increases the debt repayments. As the debt is larger, and if you go back up, then the DSRA needs to cover these, and we can see there's a circular reference. Now, how this is resolved in project finance modeling is usually using VBA or Visual Basic Applications, the programming language behind Excel, and a circular is run, a loop is run, and we ensure that the DSRA is fully funded and eventually solves. We can see this illustrated in another manner over here. Debt is raised. That debt needs to be repaid. The DSRA contains reserves for, in this example, six months of debt service, both interest and principal. The DSRA needs to be funded from debt and equity. That increases the debt amount which increases the size of the DSRA and so on. So as we said, we solve that using some, typically a VBA, but there are other ways to solve it for experienced project finance modelers.